Hey, what's going on guys? So today we are looking at the 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro. So here we go. All right guys, so the MacBook Pro we're reviewing today is the highest end that you can buy off the shelf of the 2017 model. It has the 2.9 gigahertz i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the uh, four gigabyte Intel Pro graphics, and 500 gigabyte um, solid state drive. The display is a beautiful 2880 by 1800 resolution at 220 pixels and 500 nits. What that means is that it's an incredibly beautiful and bright screen. Everything is just vivid on it and the brightness is just amazing on this screen. Above the screen, it has a webcam, but it's a 720p webcam. So you're not gonna be shooting videos with this, but for things like FaceTime and stuff like that, it's probably fine. On the right side of the laptop, it has two USB Thunderbolt 3 ports and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The left side has two more of those USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, and that's it. Now the whole USB-C thing, I love the concept of one port to rule them all, and I honestly didn't really have any problem with it. It has the four, four USB-C ports, and I got an adapter that uses one of them, provides another USB-C port, two USB-3, and an HDMI out. I did have an issue with the HDMI out that it would cause issues with my Wi-Fi. And just keep in mind, this adapter is a third-party adapter. It's not from Apple. And I have read reviews of other people with similar adapters having problem on MacBook Pro. So with, with the HDMI plugged in, the Wi-Fi would drop in and out, mostly out, until I switched over to my five gigahertz wireless and then everything was fine. So I don't know if it's something with the 2.4 gigahertz that these devices interfere with that or what that deal is. But other than that, I did not really have an issue with the USB-C thing. So at the top of the device is the touch bar with Touch ID, the keyboard, and the massive trackpad. So going over the touch bar first, over on the right side is the touch sensor. So you can use Touch ID to get in and purchase things on Apple, things like that. It just records and scans your fingerprint, much like on your smartphone. The rest of it is the touch bar. Customization of the touch bar is done through a setting and system preferences. There is a four button control strip that kind of follows you throughout the system. You can control that for quick access, um, volume up, volume down, brightness, whatever you wanna put in there. You can also expand that out and it shows you some more options that are accessible through the system. In applications, you also have the ability to customize depending on the application. For the most part, I'm not sure the touch bar is really that useful yet. A lot of the things that you can create touch items for also have shortcut keys. And to use the touch bar instead of the shortcut key doesn't really make that much sense because with the touch bar, you have to look down and see what's on the bar and then hit the right option. Um, with, the, with the hot key, you can just do the keyboard combination and um, get it done, usually from muscle memory if you've been doing it long enough. There are some additional functionality, like in Final Cut Pro, you can scrub through the timeline. In different photo editing applications, you can select a color palette. So those are actually really, really useful. But for the most part, um, shortcut keys really kind of uh, do what you need to do. There is also an application called Better Touch Tool. This is not an Apple app. This is a third party application that allows you to do some additional customization on the touch bar. So you might want to check that out too. So next up is the keyboard. This is the second generation butterfly mechanism. And for me, I didn't really care for it all that much. I prefer something with a little more travel, but I must say that the clicking is satisfying. Um, it, it feels a little more uh, solid than a typical laptop. It's definitely one of the best keyboards on a mobile device that I've used. I just prefer the older mechanism versus the newer one. Last is that gigantic trackpad. So the trackpad works really well, functions well, very responsive, all the gestures work really well, but it is giant. Now I never had problems with palm rejection or anything, but it's just weird having a trackpad that big and I'm not really sure yet what the purpose of this is. If it worked with the Apple Pen or something like that where you could use it as a, a drawing tablet, that would be a fantastic idea. But in the, the iteration that it is right now, I'm just not sure why it's that big, but functionality wise, it's definitely without a doubt the best trackpad I've used on any laptop. So the performance of this thing is great. It starts up very, very fast. Everything that you do on a daily basis, just it just flies on this machine. And then uh, editing in Final Cut Pro, I did a uh, six minute video, uh, exported it at uh, H.264, and it exported in about a minute. That's at uh, 1080p, it's not 4K, but six minutes of video, ex 
exporting to H.264 in about a minute is amazing. I can't get anything near that on uh, Adobe Premiere. The battery life on this device is rated at 10 hours. And I would say in my testing, using just regular, you know, day-to-day -day stuff, maybe some word processing, web browsing, watching a few YouTube videos, um, I got just right around that. I got right around eight and a half to 10 hours, depending on what I was doing. If you're playing games or you're editing, it kills that. I mean, you're gonna get maybe two to two and a half hours out of the battery um, if you're doing video editing that whole time or playing games the whole time. So if you're gonna do any of those th two things, you definitely wanna be plugged into power because those are really uh, CPU and GPU intensive, which just runs down the battery really quick. And that's not really a fault of Apple. You're gonna find that same scenario on any mobile device that you use. The gaming, I won't go into too much because I'm going to do another video and I'll put up a card uh, when I get that done. Um, it should be within a day or two after this video. I will summarize it by saying it's kind of what you expect on a Mac. Things were playable, but not stellar. Um, I In the video, I'll try some uh, Mac OS games as well as some games on Windows through Boot Camp and uh, show you what those results are. All right, guys, so would I recommend the 2017 15-inch MacBook with the highest off-the-shelf configuration you can get, I would say it depends. It depends on what your usage is. So if you're somebody that wants a machine to browse the web, watch videos, do word processing, that kind of basic stuff, do not get this machine. This is way, way overkill. This thing came in with tax at right around uh, 3,000. I think it was $2,900. Um, so for that kind of use, that basic use, you're much better off going on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or Amazon or wherever you buy your used items and looking for either a 2011 or 2012 uh, model MacBook Pro. Those are both great machines. Uh, you might want to go with the 12 because that has the USB 3. The 2011 still had USB 2. But they're both very, very upgradable. You can upgrade the hard drive, the RAM. You can even add an additional hard drive. The battery's replace replaceable. This new MacBook Pro, nothing is replaceable. There's no upgradability and there's no user upgradable parts. Um, those older machines perform extremely well, especially if you max out the RAM and put in a SSD, they perform great. Even for some basic video editing, they work really well. So you might wanna look at that route. If you're somebody that's heavy into media, and I mean media creation, not necessarily media consumption, so you're doing Final Cut Pro, you're doing some effects, Photoshop, Premiere, uh, After Effects, whatever, um, along those lines, then this laptop starts making a little more sense. That price tag is still a little steep because you can get a Windows-based machine that does all that stuff, except for obviously Final Cut, that is um, a lot cheaper but performs as well in you know Photoshop, After Effects, uh, Premiere, that kind of thing. Um, but with the MacBook Pro, you're getting the Apple ecosystem, if you are have already bought into that. The screen, the keyboard, and the trackpad are some of the best that I've used on any device, especially that screen and the responsiveness of the trackpad just completely blew me away. The touch strip, I don't know. I don't know that that's there yet. It's a little gimmicky at this point. But at that 3000 price point, the build quality and the ecosystem of the Apple product, if you're already in that ecosystem, might make sense. Um, if you're not in that ecosystem already, or you just need a basic machine, then it doesn't make sense at that price. Uh, for me, I'm not keeping this unit. For me, it doesn't, um, I can't really justify the price for the, uh, any benefits that I've, that I've gained. So guys, I hope you found this informative and useful. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Please hit that subscribe button and the like if you like the video. If you have any video ideas, please let me know. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.